Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. There have been many times in previous videos where I've showed you everything that I love about the Mega Build. Well today I'm going to show you everything that I hate. Now hate's actually a pretty strong word, so maybe not hate because I've already changed all the things I hated, but there are a few things which I 100% would do differently. The other thing I want to point out, you see this on the wall? I, this on the wall has been the most commented on thing uh, of anything. So if, uh, if there's something wrong with the tanks or, or I say something wrong, you know, occasionally I get one person say something. Um, and whereas there have been so many people that have told me how to get rid of this. Uh, I did actually try it, but it, it sort of leaves this little black smudge. So I'm going to get some proper stuff to clean it off. So let's, should we start that with number one? Things I shouldn't have done with the mega build uh, right on the wall. As I said, uh, oh, look, it's an easy fix. So, um, but now is the real things that I don't like. Now, without a doubt, the number one thing which I would change is the wood. Uh, I wish I had gone with metal, um, like a, an, I think it's an aluminium stand, uh, but wood was cheaper. It's what I had available at the time, and um, it is bowing. Now, what most people don't realize is it's actually supported underneath now, so they can't actually bow anymore, but uh, that is definitely, without a doubt, something that I would do differently. When I build the Mega Build 2.0, uh, there will be no wood at all. That's right, you got a little glimpse into my mind already. I'm thinking about the Mega Build 2.0. Um, I need a bigger room first, but uh, it's always, always thinking, always thinking about what's, uh, what's next. If, um, if you think the water's a little bit murky, it's because I'm currently doing a water change on this system. Uh, and it's not actually murky, it's like little tiny, tiny bubbles. So um, anyway, on to the next thing. The second problem, the second most annoying thing in this room, and some of you will have faced this yourself, is Xenia. Now don't get me wrong, Xenia looks amazing to uh, the uneducated person, someone who's not uh, kept marine fish before, are often mesmerized by the movement of Xenia. But the problem with it is, as you can see, it just gets out of control. And um, the problem is I've, I've cleared off the back of this wall probably at least four times in the last year. And, uh, and as you can see, it has gone crazy. Now, Xenia is very different to other corals which have similar issues. So people often uh, bunch it together with clove polyps or uh, the other one is uh, green star polyps. But both clove polyps and green star polyps, even these sort of, uh, I call them pink star polyps, but they're actually a type of gorgonian I found out. Um, but even all of these can be uh, can be restricted to a specific rock, whereas Xenia has the ability to just randomly let go and float around the system. It's not just in this tank; it's also in the tank down the end. Similar issue where it's getting out of control. Um, so that is something that I would probably have managed a little bit better if I started again. Now number three is the design of the RO system. So there's nothing wrong with the actual unit itself, um, but basically how it works is there is a, um, like, an auto, uh, like a float valve in here to automatically shut off the water supply. But I've never been able to get it so that the pump comes on and off automatically when the, the, uh, the unit needs water. So again, minor thing, it's more of a quality of life thing that most people wouldn't do anyway. But when you have a tank that's this big, and it takes 12 hours to fill up, you can often forget that you put it on. <laughs> it can't overflow because there is a, a drain so to stop it from overflowing, but obviously that does mean that occasionally it gets left on and then water just flows down the drain, which is both a waste of water and a waste of money. So if I had managed to get it so that the, uh, the little shut off worked, which I did actually buy one, but um, for whatever reason, I just couldn't, I couldn't ever, I even had an electrician look at it, couldn't work out how to do it. Now number four is flow. Obviously these tanks are essentially peninsula tanks, which means I only have uh, wave makers, the MP40s at one end of the tank. And although the MP40s are more than powerful to get from one end to the other end of the tank without there being any issues uh, for, the, for the power heads themselves, um, I feel that in the SPS tank, not necessarily the other tanks, the SPS tank, uh, the flow at one end is extremely strong. And then the flow at the other end is 
not strong enough um, because that I, they have to be set like that so that it's not literally blasting the flesh off. For whatever reason, in the, uh, in, in the more LPS dominated trays, there's less of an issue. I don't know if it's because obviously in this system, all the, the plugs are quite low. They're, like, they're quite flat. Whereas in the uh, SPS system, you can see that the, the corals stick out a lot, a lot higher. So, um, so that's number four. Now I've mentioned number five before. It is an old favorite of mine. Number five is the uh, waste valve on the Nile skimmers. Now the reason that this is one of my favorite ones is because as I mentioned previously, this little pipe here was one of the only parts of the mega build which I contributed with regards to the idea of it. Uh, it's a great idea when it works. It works on the other one now, uh, but unfortunately this tube is completely blocked. So it did take a year to get it blocked, uh, but, um, and I can just change it. It's just, this one's quite difficult to change. I did manage to change uh, that one, uh, but I haven't managed to change it on this one yet. And I will probably need the help of James who's coming back in May. So you might see him again soon. Now for number six, I just remembered I have to take you back to the other side of the room. And that is because there are two things over here to show you. Uh, the first one is that this tank here is chipped uh, and you can see it's actually been chipped on this tank so when when this tank was first put in it was uh they uh they crashed into each other basically and uh, and chipped just the uh the corner doesn't make a big difference but i like things to look nice um and it just uh, the other thing is pretty sharp sometimes that's why i've got a bit of silicon on it and number seven is uh there's actually two things that fit into the number seven category uh, and just to clarify, this isn't anything to do with the companies that made these. So what happened was the drawings were given to the companies and the drawings had the wrong dimensions on them. So the first thing to point out is this white bit here is meant to cover this whole hole. So all the way along, there was meant to be that white bit was meant to be extended out to here. But for some reason, there was um, there, there, one of the dimensions on the drawing was incorrect. So um, it's like that on both the systems. I could just get another piece of acrylic, but it doesn't particularly matter. Uh, the other thing which had the wrong dimension, and this had the wrong dimension by literally two millimeters, and it doesn't really make a big difference. Um, right, so I've mentioned it before, these lids were made by London Aquatic Design. Uh, I gave him the measurements thinking, oh, it'll be fine. It's, I, it, like, it doesn't matter if there's a couple of millimeters out. Apparently it does matter if it's a couple of millimeters out. So this one slightly sticks up, not again, not their fault. And I can prove to you it's not their fault because I have ordered, this was the first one I got. The second one I got is over there. And then the third one's at the very back and I just ordered another three. So I can assure you, this is mine. It doesn't make a massive difference but um, the new ones were built differently so they fit slightly better into the tanks. So again, once again, happy with the lids, completely happy with the lids, nothing to do with the company, completely to do with me essentially just um, half-assing it. Because <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't do things, other than keep coral, I don't do things properly that often and, and sometimes I wing it and uh, sometimes that get you in, gets you in trouble. What I can say is that these lids fixed a completely different problem for me. Uh, oh look, oh, it's, just, it's just hunting. This is my smartest copper band. Remember I said that they're all basically thick? This is without a doubt my smartest one. Um, anyway, back to, the, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, so the lids also fixed a different problem for, that I had. I had this dream of having these tanks that had, that had no bracing on them which in, in, in a home aquarium is brilliant because it looks so clean. Uh, but when you're working uh, and doing frags, for example, it's nice to be able to have this little ridge to put things on. And um, for, a home, for, for a tank in my house, I would have it, again, similar to this, where, um, where it's, just, it's rimless. Uh, whereas for a coral farm, I would never make that mistake again because when I'm fragging, I just put a little frag plugs here or glue here or anything. It's just like having a little shelf. So, um, so that without a doubt fixed that issue for me. I'm not gonna lie, I've lost track of what number on now. I think we're on number eight. Uh, so let's, let's just go with eight. Uh, and number eight is again, it's through the corals. So let me show you. Now this next one's sort of more of like an OCD thing. 
So originally, I wanted to have all SPS in one tank, and all LPS and soft corals in another system. Uh, but as you can see, this is sort of a mix and match of soft corals, SPS, and LPS. Um, and although it's a relatively easy fix, my theory is that they've been growing in here well for years. So why do I want to move them over to that tank where potentially their growth might slow? Uh, these are actually some really, really interesting frog spawns. These are the only two bits I've got left. One of them's mine, uh, and there is a, a young lady who has reserved another one. But these are basically bicolored um, frog spawns where they're essentially sort of a little bit of that colour and a little bit of that colour. Not quite those that colour. Uh, and then I also got this gold one, which is really interesting as well, which I've not seen before. So, um, yeah, some of the corals have been coming in recently. have been really good. One of the, actually, one of my favourite corals that came in recently is this Synphilia. It, the, with the, uh, the red with the uh, yellow eyes. Not so, have, not so sure about this one. This is obviously a much bigger piece, uh, which has been cut into multiple pieces. And it has healed, but... It just doesn't quite have the same look as, um, as this one. These ones also came in that same shipment. Now for number nine, I have to bring you down to the bottom tank of system two. Now, they're obviously not playing ball at the moment, but this is the aggressive tank. So that is by far the most aggressive self in I own. Uh, there is also a dual tank in here, and there's also the worst offender somewhere, but you can't see at the moment because obviously shy. Uh, it's a bit camera shy, is the Soho tank. Um, oh, right on cue, there you go, there's the Soho tank. And uh, I, the, sometimes the problems with the Mega Bill is I treat it like it's my own personal tank in, in, in the house. And I forget that it's, it's a business. And I buy things that I want because I'm a hobbyist first. And there is, a Soho and a Clown tank have no place in a, uh, in, in a, uh, a, t a system like this because although they're nice fish, I can get perfectly other nice fish, like in, in uh, System 1 with the Convict Tang and the Vampire Tang and, um, e and the, the Nasso Tang. Like, they are, they're not aggressive. So, from a business perspective, what I should have done is just put peaceful fish in both systems. But what I did do is I made a peaceful system, an aggressive system, and the aggressive system now causes me trouble. Because I can't buy the fish in there with them because they try and kill them. Uh, sometimes the dual tang, which obviously is the most expensive one in this system, uh, has uh, a, a tough time. And uh, the other thing is, um, the, uh, oh no, that is it. There is no other thing. They're just bastards sometimes. <laughs> now while I'm down here, you'll probably notice that there's something missing from this tank. And it's the marginalis butterfly fish, which you've seen in many other videos. Now the reason for that is because that fish went rogue and decided to not just eat one type of coral, it just started to decimate loads of corals. Now I know that that um, fish has been in captivity in a reef tank for a long time without any issues, uh, as far as I know. Um, but then, um, now, when I first put it in, I put it in the tank at the top, and, and that, in that system it started eating acans. So I then moved it down to here, and it wasn't, it, it wasn't too much trouble down here until until recently, where it basically started to eat the Goniopora, uh, the Sophastria. Um, it, let's just put it this way. It probably cost me a tremendous amount of money, that fish. Um, now, the rules are with, with fish that eat coral in these systems, because I, obviously I have a few, uh, a few copper bands, uh, is that if they eat coral in one tank, then I will identify if that's you know, like a, a, a coral that's worth the risk. Um, or if not, I'll move that coral to a, that, that fish to all coral, but usually it's the fish that moves to a different tank uh, to see if it's better there. Now an example of that is the cop band that was in the top system decided to start eating acans and also uh, pecking the trachophilia. So that is now in the zoa tray, and in the zoa tray it's fine. With the marginalis though, uh, that fish has been in multiple tanks uh, and it eats multiple different corals and eventually you just, uh, there's just nowhere for it to go. So um, it's gone to one of my friends who has a large fish only system and uh, that's one of the good things about this. All of the mistakes that I make, well, there is always somewhere that the fish can go. So, um, so, so yeah, moving on. Right, so we're now onto the final section of the room which is obviously the very end with these, these last two tanks and uh, the bit with the saw and the sink. Now, generally I'm happy. There are I think three issues here. 
The first one is, you can see that a little while ago, uh, as it was actually while I was in America, so you can see that there is mold that runs along here. Now that isn't moisture from the room, that is actually because the water pipe that comes into the room for the RO unit runs across the top there and then all the way along there. Now for whatever reason, this bit here wasn't insulated and it was dripping while I wasn't here and has made that part of the, uh, the roof mouldy. Um, it's, it's insulated now, I'm hoping that it will go away. It's, uh, it's not getting any worse, let's put it that way. So, it, and it is actually looking like it's getting better. Uh, but that's one of the things. Uh, the next thing is that the sink goes rusty. I don't know if this is avoidable, uh, but uh, I, I, I bought a more expensive sink in the hope that it wouldn't go rusty because I knew that they pro potentially would go rusty. But going forward, I would probably have a ceramic sink because then they can't go rusty. Um, and the final thing, which is, is, is pretty, it's pretty, actually it's two, two final things. Okay, last two, definitely last two. Uh, one second, let me show you. Storage in this room is absolutely a massive issue. So you can see I'll just like throw my pots and nets down here, but gradually bit by bit, uh, there, is, there is just not enough storage in, in this room. Uh, obviously I had to sacrifice storage to have more corals. Uh, which I think is uh, well worth doing. But uh, it, it's just like a quality of life thing because a lot of the stuff is kept in the house. So I've got a whole, a whole room dedicated essentially to all the boxes and packing material and um, all the 25 kilo bags of sodium bicarbonate and things like that. So um, it's, uh, if I did this again, I would definitely make more of an effort to um, to make sure I had more storage in the uh, in the room. Now, once again, the final thing which I think is debatable is if it is actually a problem or not, considering this is after all a coral farm. But it is, without a doubt, excessive growth, which causes me the, the most amount of work uh, in here, because some corals grow faster than others and some corals sell quicker than others. So um, you can see that the ones that, don't, that sell slightly slower than others, uh, like these Pandoras, for example, uh, just have a, an explosion of population. And that applies to everything. That applies to the Zoas, some of the Montipora, um, even the Sophastras also are, a, uh, are one of the, um, the worst offenders. Right, that's it for today, guys. Uh, I hope you found that interesting, just because it shows you that even when things look like they're 95% perfect or whatever, um, from the outside, there are still things which I would change, similar to your systems, where there's always this one or two things which you just wish you had done differently. So, um, so yeah, so whether you think that last one is a, uh, is a negative or not is, uh, is up to you, but... Um, it's, uh, I have no doubt that many of you will have frag racks at home that have coral on them that you're not selling. And the same applies to me, but on a much grander scale. Anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I just wanna say a massive thank you to everyone's sports channel on Patreon. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.